In this video, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about the specializations within blacksmithing. So if this is the profession that you wanted to do, this will give you a really good breakdown. Let's get into it. All right, let's jump into the game so we're not wasting any time here. So when it comes to blacksmithing, you have four different specializations. You have the ever-burning forge, you have means of production, weapon smithing, and armor smithing. Now I have done a video specifically talking about the ever-burning forge because I think it did come off a little confusing to people, but we're gonna go ahead and just recap it really, really quick. If you're looking into making consumable items, like let's say, for example, all the different alloys that you can make, then ever-burning forge might be a specialization that you wanna focus on. The reason why is when you start putting knowledge points into Everburning Forge, you're gonna learn how to make an Everburning Ignition. Basically what this does is gonna increase your resourcefulness, your crafting speed, and your ingenuity whenever you're crafting items. And that goes for any weapons and armor that you're making, and also for consumables. So the main note here, you're gonna be focusing on how many charges you can actually have at one time, and it'll also speed up the reset of these charges. Plus, it's also gonna give you 10% extra back on your ingenuity whenever ingenuity kicks in. Now the different specializations here, the imaginative foresight is gonna focus on your ingenuity, discerning discipline is gonna increase your resourcefulness, and then you've got gracious foraging, which is gonna focus on your multi-crafting. And that's basically it for Everburning Forge. Moving on to means of production, this one's a little unique. So the main note here is gonna give you more skill points when you're crafting items that are tools for a profession or accessories for a profession. And when you start off here, you do learn the artist and blacksmith's toolbox. And as you go along, you hit these milestones, which will give you like plus five skill in crafting professions, equipment, and also it says consumable. So I'm, I'm assuming that this is pertaining to these kind of consumables, but I'm not too sure. If anybody knows about this, go ahead and comment down below. But it is saying here and consumable. So I'm assuming that that means that your alloys are gonna get a lot better just by putting points into this node. Now the three sub-specializations, this is where things kind of start to separate within means of production. If you go tools of the trade, you're gonna be focusing on making tools for a profession, and accessories. For example, when you go into here, you first learn the artisan blacksmith's hammer. And then when you branch off from here, you can either go into trade tools or you can focus on trade accessories. The big thing about these is that if you wanna make trade tools and you wanna craft them to the highest quality, then you're gonna to wanna to max this out because at the very end, you learn to use finishing reagents to add additional effects when crafting profession tools. This is really big if you want the top of the top best tools in your profession. And this also goes with trade accessories. You learn the exact exact same thing at the end, you're able to use finishing reagents when you're crafting these items. Now with stonework, you're gonna be focused on making items that either increase the damage of a weapon or enhance a profession tool. Putting points into stonework itself is gonna increase your skill point for when you're crafting these stone working items. And then when you branch off and go into weapon stones, that's when you're gonna learn Iron Claw Whetstone and I'll show you exactly what that is. Iron Claw Whetstone increases the attack power and it's also depending on the quality that you make. And then the other one here is Tool Enhancement, which you end up learning how to make Iron Claw Razor Stone and that is going to sharpen your mining herbalism or skinning tool, increasing the finesse by 45 for two hours. And if you need a refresher on what finesse is, finesse is gonna increase the percentage chance of gathering more of the primary reagent that you're gathering. And basically that's all that that tree area is gonna focus on. Now moving on to fortuitous forges, this is where you're gonna be perfecting alloys and frameworks. Now we know what alloys are, they're a very big thing when it comes to blacksmithing. Frameworks are finishing reagents that can be very, very beneficial. If you take a look here at forged framework. This is a finishing crafting reagent that increases your ingenuity by 150. So if you go into this node, you're gonna be making better frameworks as you spec this out. Now, if you go into alloys, you're gonna be able to increase your skill level when you're crafting those alloys. And at the very end, you're gonna be able to use finishing reagents on those alloys to make them even better. So basically with this, you're trying to make a gold tier alloy without having to use too much concentration. The better your skill level is to get into gold tier, the less concentration you're gonna to have to use to make up the difference. So means of production, really is almost like three specializations in itself, which makes it pretty unique. Now, weaponsmithing is exactly what you think. Tapping into the first node, you're gonna be increasing your skill level when you're crafting weapons. And then you can move down into blades or you can move into haft. When you go into blades, you'll be specking out in either short blades or long blades. So with short blades, we're talking about daggers. And if you really wanna focus on these and make rogues your best friend, and if they're looking for the Everforged dagger for PVE, you're gonna to have to get 15 points into this node specifically in order just to craft it. While as long blades is something that you're gonna to have to focus on if you wanna get all the way to the charged claymore, which is the two-handed sword for PVE. That you're gonna to need to get 10 points into this node. I've seen a lot of people asking for this weapon and their commission rates that they've been giving is like 15 
15,000 gold. So it's a pretty good thing to learn. On the other end is the same thing, just with different kind of weapons. Haft is going to be focusing on maces and axes and pole arms. So it's pretty simple. If you want to learn those recipes, you're going to have to put a lot of points into it. But that's basically it. When you're putting points into these nodes, you're increasing the skill level of the quality of weapons that you're going to be making. And Armorsmith is basically the same thing that I covered in the tailoring video that I just did. The main node of Armorsmithing, you're going to be increasing the skill level for every single piece of armor that you make. And then you can go down into the three separate sub specializations. This one being large plate armor, sculpted armor, and then we have fine armor. So large plate armor, if you put points into this, you're going to be increasing the skill level at which you make breastplates, greaves, and shields. And if you're doing sculpted armor, you're going to be increasing the skill level for helmets, pauldrons, and sabatons. And then fine armor, you're going to be focused on increasing your skill level for gauntlets, braces, and belts. So as you dig deeper into these helms, you not only learn recipes, like helms, for example, the moment that you unlock this, you're going to learn the Everforged Helm. But you're also starting to focus on increasing your skill level for that specific type of armor. Whereas armor smithing up here it just gives you a skill level for every piece of armor. And then right down here at helms, you're specifically increasing your skill level for helms that you craft. And that's basically it for blacksmithing. It's a really fun profession, and a lot of people are always looking for work to be done with crafting orders. For me, I went with the Everburning Forge. I love the idea that I'm going to be able to get multi-crafting when I'm making alloys or getting reagents kicked back to me through resourcefulness. But you have a lot of different options that you could focus on. And if you really, really wanted to go big into it, you could get four characters and have each of them focus on a certain specialization. But if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm making a ton of World of Warcraft content these days. And don't forget to check out my Discord and Twitch channel. I'm doing a lot of gym workouts in my garage in the morning and then we transition over into gaming in the afternoon, sometimes in the evening too. And if you guys wanna support the work that I'm doing, go ahead and check out my membership here on YouTube or you can go over to Twitch and check out how to support me over there. Other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful time with the expansion and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.